we're going to take a look at uh, an introduction to compound interest and what it represents. When we compound, what we mean is that we're going to reinvest the interest earned into an account and let that interest earn interest itself. And so it's kind of a, a reinvestment. And what we're going to look at is can we derive what the general formula is from the, the pattern we see after a few years. So I'm going to start with some initial conditions. We're going to say that we're going to start the account with $100. And we're going to look at an annual compounding period. So we've got an annual compounding rate of 5%. So if I start with 100, what happens after one year? Well, what happens after one year is, well, I have my initial principal. So that's my principal that I started with. That $100 earned 5%. So I have the interest calculation. So when I add the 100 plus the 5% that I earn, you may just put that in the calculator, you get 105 as the answer. Well, I want to do a step in between that shows a little bit more pattern for me to see if I can't see the same thing going on over and over. And so I'm going to factor out the 100. When I factor, when I factor out the 100 for the first term, I have my placeholder of 1. And in this term, the 100 times 0.05, when I factor out the 100, I have the placeholder of 0.05. Notice if I distribute the multiplication, it gives me right back what I started with, my principal plus my interest. Now take a look after two years. Well, I'm starting at the end of year one with the $105. So that's my principal. So I have a hundred and five dollars to start with and I'm going to add in five percent interest. So again I have the principal plus interest. So you can do this on your calculator and you would get an answer of a hundred and ten point two five. So we know we're going to get a hundred and ten dollars and twenty five cents after the second year. But I'm looking for a pattern and so I'm going to do this same approach. This 105 factors out, and that leaves me with 1 plus 0.05. And I see a little bit of similarities between these two. But the other thing I notice is, you know, I can put in what 105 is here. And so if I do that, that 105 was 100 times 1 plus 0.05 and that's my 105 so I still have to multiply that by 1 plus 0.05 well now I, I, I see something I can do here I've got the same base well the rule of exponents says you know we think of this as both of an exponent of 1 so I'm going to simplify it and say though this is 100 times 1 plus 0.05 and I forgot the 1 there squared so after one year, I have 100 times 1 plus 0.05. After two years, I have 100 times 1 plus 0.05 squared. We have the totals that we've got in our calculator. We would miss this underlying pattern that was happening. We can figure out what's going to happen after three years, but after three years, can we jump to the conclusion? Based on these uh, examples here, uh, these two specifics, can we say a general conclusion is that, you know, is it going to be 100 times 1 plus 0.05 cubed? So my year is just going in as in the exponent here. I still have the principal of 100 and the interest rate is 5%, so 0.05. So that's my guess. I think I have a way to get a general conclusion. So I'm going to take my answer here and do the work and compare it to my guess and see if I get the same result. And if I do, then I think I've solved the problem of can I find the amount of money after any given time period for this problem. So after three years, again, I'm starting in the beginning of that time period with $110.25. Again, that's my principal and now I have to add my interest. 
So $110.25 earns 5% interest. So I'm going to put that into my calculator and see what I get as a result. So we have 110.25, and then I'm adding to it 110.25. You may be asking, well, why don't you factor it again? Well, I'm just doing the calculation to see if I do get the same result. And that's uh, 115. Point, uh, 0.7625 and I'm just going to do all the decimal places. I know we're dealing with money and we should round it but I want to show that these two answers are exactly going to be the same. So I'm comparing this now to 100 times 1 plus 0.05 cubed and algebraically we can show they're the same but right now we're just kind of saying that's the pattern I thought I had so I'm checking it. So I'm going to take uh, 100 and multiply it by, what do I have in my parentheses? 1 plus 0 0.05 and I'm cubing it so I'm going to use this x to the y so it says that my exponent is going to be, we want 3 115.7625 they're the same so my, my guess, what I found was correct that I've got a pattern here. If I put my principal, my rate, and my time, I'm going to have the value after that given time period. So if I want to know how much is in the account after four years, I would take this amount that I ended with after three years, this exact amount, and add the interest, that 5% interest that the money would have earned. And what my pattern tells me is, well, I can just evaluate that by taking 100 times 1 plus 0.05 to the fourth power. And so if I take my 100 times, parentheses here, 1 plus 0.05 and raise that to the fourth, I see that there would be $121 and roughly 55 cents. But I didn't round to 115.76. If I start rounding these answers, there'll be maybe a little differentiation between the the answer from this formula and the answer when I had done rounding as I get larger and larger for the number of years. And that's besides the point. What we really want to see is that, you know, if I compound annually that I can calculate how much is going to be in the account by simply taking principal plus interest for every year and I don't have to do this now over and over and over again if I want to just jump ahead and say well I really want to see what happens after 10 years I'm not going to have to find answer for 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 like I was initially doing here uh, so what I found was I've got a method for calculating it for any given time period, but if I want to do it in general, after 10 years, this pattern allows me to evaluate this more efficiently. So I can jump ahead to any given year. So that's the advantage of finding a formula for, for doing this calculation, is now I can jump ahead and say, well, I'm going to put that investment in there for 10 years, and I know after 10 years that I'm going to have $162 and roughly 89 cents. So when we look at compounding, we're not going to get the same amount of money every year added to our account. What we're going to get is a little bit extra. So that between year zero and one I added five dollars for the five percent but then this hundred and five earned five percent we saw well we didn't get just five dollars we earned five dollars and twenty five cents and from year two to year three a hundred and ten point twenty five I didn't add five twenty five I added a little bit more I added uh, roughly five dollars and fifty one cents to my account so the amount of money I'm adding every year interval is getting a little bit larger and so this is different than simple interest because I'm earning money faster than if I had to just use simple interest. So on this table here, what I have is that difference between simple interest at 5% and compounding interest at 5%. So after one year they look the same, 
but with compounding I reinvest that extra five dollars and what I see is that I earned an extra 25 cents. After three years by continuing to re reinvest I'm at positive 76 cents over the simple interest and that amount difference just gets larger and larger every year and when I hit the 10 year I already have over twelve dollars extra from compounding than just a simple interest calculation itself. Now if we want to compound more often than just annually we can do the same type of pattern uh, calculation and so I'll leave that for the next video.